Hey guys, this is Rob from ChainsawGuitarTourism.net. Um, today's video is going to be a bit different. We're going to do a bit of a FAQ. Uh, I keep getting questions asked, and I thought I'd just create a video that uh, answers some of them. Uh, I will be doing future videos where I'll be doing answers to questions. So if you've got any questions, just comment on my videos, uh, post them on the Facebook page, uh, or send them to me on Twitter. Okay, some questions that I get asked quite a lot, or comments that I receive quite a lot, is that I look like people. Mostly, people say I look like Simon Pegg. I didn't know Simon Pegg played guitar. And how long has he had a goatee and long hair? You look like Simon Pegg, just with longer hair. Um, or anyone blondes, really. Hi Rob, this might freak you out, but you look exactly like my friend Rob. Um, there's a few different people. Some of them are from metal bands, I think that's a bit more appropriate, or from rock bands. Or people say I look like, I don't know, Thor or something who actually have red hair. Well, I don't see it myself, but apparently I look like Simon Pegg according to the internet, so um, yeah, I acknowledge that. I need no more comments about how I look like people. Maybe this is a thing that other people get that are on the internet, I don't know, but okay, I got it. I look a bit like some people, some other blonde people, because all blonde people look the same. Does anybody know what guitar brand or model this guy in the video is playing? This is my guitar that I like to use because it's got a whammy bar and a locking nut. It's actually by a company called Maverick, um, which don't actually exist anymore. Uh, this model is the F1. If you can get hold of one, that's basically what I'm using. The, the only thing I've modified in it, well, I say the only thing, there's quite a few things. I've put Zach Wilde active pickups in, that's the Zach Wilde set. Um, and I've modified the bridge because I kept putting the strings in the bridge and they'd come out when I was using the whammy bar. So I've modified it so that the strings actually like the ball end of the string is actually attached, I don't know if you can see that there, the ball end of the string is actually attached to the um, bridge through the, through the hole. That's basically the modification. Oh yeah, and I have changed the, um, the actual whammy bar that goes in there. I took it off another guitar because I preferred it. Um, apart from that, I've taken the tone control out and put a battery in. That's for the active pickups. There wasn't really much space. I did have it um, attached to the back, you might be able to see there's a small hole there where the wires used to come out, um, but that didn't work because obviously that's against you whilst you're playing, so um, it's a bit DIY this one. Uh, the original pickups were fine, um, I just wanted a bit more, I wanted some active pickups really, and I use them, I like to use this one for recording because of the activeness of the pickups. So there it is, Maverick F1 with active EMG pickups. Okay next, I keep getting comments on my video about increasing guitar speed. Um, I did this one quite a while ago. Speed is overrated. What I'd really like to see you do is difficult chord voicings that move melodically. Mmm, because I don't care about it. One note filled with passion is so much more listenable than the running up and down the scale shown here. Most people who are negative towards fast playing can't play fast. There can be huge emotion in speed, especially when using slower licks and accentuating them with speedy ones. It can show much emotion if done correctly. Speed is not everything. But why not use it in our arsenal? Personally, I think it's badass. So sick of hearing losers saying that playing fast isn't as important as playing well. People who can play fast already know the value of being able to play slow. But people who only play slow don't seem to understand being able to play fast allows musicians to include a wider variety of expression in his music. People who criticise those who play fast so in order to make themselves feel better about not being able to play fast themselves, with some few exceptions. Um, I, yes, I understand that speed isn't everything. In fact, there's an article I've written for another website, I'll write the uh, link in the description, uh, where I just do a one note solo. So uh, yes, I understand that millions of notes and uh, lots of speed isn't always the way. Um, what that video was about though, that was more about uh, how to get fast. It's not saying you must do this. It's like if I created a video on how to do um, sweet picking or how to play uh, country style licks, it doesn't mean you have to use those in your own playing. So yes, I understand that speed isn't everything, it's uh, musicality I think is the, the overriding thing. And you can check out that article that I wrote where I kind of prove that I like to use one note sometimes. I've always felt most comfortable holding the pick with three fingers, thumb, index and middle. But I always see guitarists holding with two, am I doing it wrong? The only other guitarist I've seen so with three fingers is Eddie Van Halen. There are a few different factors that come into holding the pick. Um, you may or may not disagree with all of them, but I feel I have my reasons why I use these different ways. Um, essentially, this is my pick as an example. 
you want a lot of surface area on the pick, so you want a good grip of the pick. Um, I tend to use finger and thumb. Um, two fingers is okay, but you lose um, some flexibility, you lose some agility with the pick because you're now tied, two fingers are tied to the pick. Um, so you have to sort of do more of a, this kind of motion, whereas if you've got two fingers, you've got this, you have that flexibility to change the tone and change slightly the angle, um, all while keeping a good grip. That's why I like to use the, the side of the, the finger method. Um, so that's why I use my method. If your method works for you and you're using all these fingers, just be aware that you might be uh, affecting your mobility and affecting your picking agility. Um, and if you ever want to get into hybrid picking where you're using these two fingers and sometimes your little finger as to pick the strings, um, you can't do it because you've only got one finger. Little finger's okay to use, but it, it's a bit short and useless when it comes to finger picking. And a lot of classical guitarists will agree. So that's why I like to hold the pick with one uh, finger. Hey dude, have you done something on a way to use the Locrian mode with say harmonic minor and Phrygian dominant? Cool vid by the way, I like the simple approach. Hmm, the Phrygian dominant, harmonic minor, uh, Locrian mode, these are all things that are quite advanced. They're um, not the sort of thing you find in a nursery rhyme. Sound quite exotic, but obviously that's why we love them. Um, I can do a video on these scales, and I have done a video on, I think I did the Locrian mode a while ago. It just wasn't very popular and not many people seemed interested in it. If there is actually an interest, if you're interested in this, please comment below and um, I'll get around to doing some videos if there's enough interest in these crazy scales. Um, maybe I'll do like a, a scale, crazy scale um, series or something. So if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you head on over to my website, you can see that I do uh, Skype lessons. You can get in contact for Skype lessons or uh, video exchange lessons if the uh, time zones don't match up and we don't have the time because I'm not going to teach a guy at like 2 a.m. here. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not that dedicated or uh, that I fail in that way, but uh, that's just how it is. You could also get a copy of my ebook, Awesome Lead Guitar One, which is all about lead guitar playing. If you're starting out with lead guitar playing, and I don't mean right at the beginning, because we go through things like phrasing, the basic scales, pentatonic scales and um, all that, then stuff like dynamics and all the stuff about improvisation. So I talk a little bit about how to start improvising and um, get up to a, a certain level. Uh, they, there is some 17 example solos you can learn and uh, obviously 17 backing tracks that go with those. So if you wanna check that out, please go to my website, linked below. And until then, I'll see you next time. Now, I don't own a um, watt Marshall stack. I wish I did, but apparently I don't. Um, if you've got one of those, fantastic. That's what you're going to need. Um, pair it up with a Gibson guitar of some sort. Ideally an SG, but you can also use an SG to get this kind of tone. Um, if you don't have one of those, like me, you're going to have to make do with something else.